Welcome, Oldsmobile men, to Geek Salad's retro movie review from the Geek Salad podcast. I'm Andy. And I'm Mike. Ah! And today we are going to do a very, very quick retro review of an absolute Christmas classic, 1983. It's a Christmas story. One of my all time favorite Christmas movies. Yeah. Easily and in the top as you can tell by the differential in the format, we just finished recording our Christmas episode. Um, we missed last week, so we just want to get out a quick uh, retro review for last week before we go into one later this week uh, when we cover Die Hard with the uh, lovely Nick from the Black Girls 2 Stuff 2 podcast. Yay! Yay! So, Christmas Story, when was the first time you saw it? Probably on TV. Really? Yeah. Okay. I saw it in the movie theater. I'm not surprised. I badgered my dad to go see it. Why? Because I, I just had to see this movie. I thought it, it sounded hilarious. Wow, I, and I didn't think it was all that popular in 1983. It wasn't, it wasn't, but I was a different type of kid in 1983, so Fair I enough. really wanted to go see it. So I I absolutely love this movie. I do too. And um, it, it's really tough for me to really, like, other than just quote this movie. Um, as uh, most of you know, I just finished the uh, musical Yes. In uh, with our community group, and it was an absolute blast. I'm so happy to have done it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now I've got all the downtime to uh, put towards doing the show and all that fun stuff. Yay! So um, let's just list out real quick some of our our favorite scenes and just kind of discuss some you know, thoughts about the movie. There's something very Monty Python ask about this movie. How so? It, it's really just kind of like a segment of sketches with yeah. a vague through line. And a lot of it actually has to do with Gene Shepard's uh, work. Have yeah. you ever read any of his books? No. no. Okay. I know this one's based on... Uh, uh, in God, God We Trust, trust All Others Pay Cash. cash. Um, See, we can't do that over the streaming. No, we cannot. <laughs> the, the the books are very much... They're, they're just collections of short stories. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what this is. The, the Little Orphan Annie uh, decoder pin is yes. a short story in and of itself. Um, the story, The Fudge. Some of Bitch. Yeah, the 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 fudge. Yeah. That's a story in and of itself. The F dash 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 word. The movie, I mean, the, the the central conceit of the movie is getting the Red Rider BB gun. Yeah. Um, and everything else are just the stops along the way of getting that. Right. And you know, I was discussing this with the guy in the cast who doesn't really care for the movie, that because it doesn't have like a cohesive story. Right. But it. I, it's tough because it's tough to say this is a great movie and not just pull out your nostalgic answers for why it's a great movie. This is a great movie. It is. I absolutely love it. I love the way it's filmed. I love how good it looks. For a movie that was shot in the 1980s to look like the 1940s, um, they, they did a fantastic job. They, did, they really did. And, for I mean, he made he did a lot with a very little budget. Yes, absolutely. And they shot this in the summer. Yeah. Which is crazy. Um, but every, every person in this cast is just at the top of their game. Um, I mean, Peter Billingsley was perfectly cast. Um, the other kids were perfectly cast. Darren McGavin and Melinda Dillon are just the MVPs of this movie. Yeah. Um, they, they're, they're very much in on the joke, but playing with the joke at the same time. Exactly. And it's, it's great too, because both of them are very well regarded actors, especially at this time. Uh, Melinda Dillon was nominated for an Oscar for Close Encounters. Darren McGavin had done been doing uh, Cult Chuck and a whole bunch of other like character roles, and it's just I just it's by him as the old man because he reminds me so much of my dad that <laughs> yeah yeah I never met my that. dad but you know no, men met him once or twice but yeah. yeah that you would get it immediately if you would uh it kind of reminds me a bit of my dad as well <laughs> but he's um. But this is just one of those movies that just really perfectly encapsulates the characters. Um, out of all those little interstitials, which one's your favorite? Uh, well, I mean, if I had to pull one, I'd probably go with the uh, um, the flagpoles. Oh, the flagpole. That's iconic. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. iconic. The triple dog deer. I love the stuff with the lamp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I really, I, I kind of wanted to get that lamp. <laughs> they are very expensive. Yes, yes, they are. As I, I, I know now that I, I know what the budget of our show was. They are very expensive. Yeah, I saw that one at the show, and like, I kind of want to go grab that. Yeah. One. No. No. Our um, the guy who played our narrator got it. Oh. <laughs> well, I would have taken the broken one too. No, that's true. Oh, you couldn't fix that broken one. They broke that beyond repair. Yeah. 
<laughs> I got glue. Yeah. Um, I love I, I I love that. I love the the subtle bribes that Ralphie gives to Miss Shields while he's waiting for his team to come oh. back. Oh yeah, the subtle as in the big whole huge <laughs> bucket. Yeah, exactly. The basket of fruit, which was just fantastic. I just love how Ralphie would constantly be like lost in his own little like Fancy worlds, you know, yeah. While everyone else has to like jack it come back into reality. Yep. Um, and that is it, it. Just there's so much great fantasy stuff in this movie. The stuff where he's shooting it in Black Bart and his his <laughs> men, and when he's got them all piled up, they all have X's over their eyes. I actually my favorite my favorite side part is probably his fantasy about going blind because of life boy. Oh yes, because of the soap. He gets yes. soap poisoning and, and went blind because of it. Just just the way Darren McGavin and and um oh, Melinda Jones, they just play off of that. The the way they overact is just something it's a comedic stroke of brilliance. Yeah. The the, the melodrama of the I whole thing. I told you not to use life boy. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, it's it's just tough. I really, you know, I I want this to be a short video, but it's it's really tough to go into a good detail about this because it's not the kind of movie I, I think you can really review. No. This is definitely a movie you just you sit down and you watch it and it almost feels with with the exception of the stuff with the with the Red Rider BB gun, it really is a circular movie. You could step in at any point in this movie and just watch until you get to that point again. It's pretty much why it's so successful in the 24 hours of a Christmas story yeah um I mean, a marathon they do every single year because you can just turn it on okay I know this yep. part and, and this is the, this is the kind of movie I know every beat mm -hmm. I know every pause I know every inflection I've seen this movie so many times oh yeah uh, but definitely worthwhile if you're if you want to who hasn't seen the movie, Hasn't seen it in a long time. I definitely advise. Oh, absolutely! Uh, revisiting it, and of course, we always do stick the um, a link to the uh, the movie down below for you to rent on YouTube if you are so inclined to do so. And in about what fourteen days or so, fourteen fifteen days. Yep, the marathon starts. It, yeah, so you got twenty four hours to pop in at any hey, time. Hey, exactly. Twelve showing straight right back to back. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh boy. Twelve showing is in many. Many hours of commercial. Yeah. CBS. Yeah. Uh, to be, to be, to be, to be precise. Yes. But that's really all I, I really want to say about Christmas Story. I mean, this, yeah. like I said, this is going to be a quick, like, ten minute. Yeah. Review. Um. The Scott Farkas affair. Scott, the Scott Farkas affair is just great stuff. The fact that everyone had that bully growing up. Yeah. And it's just like there were so many kids, and they're all bloodthirsty. Like, yeah, kill them. <laughs> But it's just it's just such a wonderful ode to childhood, and it's something that, you know, growing up in the '80s, it was something that was very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I and my kids, my kids absolutely love this this movie. Yeah, I mean, what I what I really love, especially though, is because you know it is funny. It is you know you know the old man la you know throws off those words, but in the end, it's the old man that gets him the gun because. He knows what he knows what it's like to be a kid. Married. Exactly, exactly. And so there's that connection. And even earlier than that, you know, after the Scott Farkas affair, there was that connection between the mother and and Ralphie. Yeah, things were different between him and his mom. Yeah. So you know, while it's funny, and you know, you, everyone knows about the Red Rider BB gun, there is there is a family story in there that's a very core part of that movie. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just it's very heartwarming, but at the same time is very. Um, it's very irreverent. Yes. Yeah. You know, so it's it, it kind of makes for a great Christmas movie absolutely. because it's not it's not as treacly as some are. It's no, not, absolutely it's not. It's not sicky sweet. Yeah. It's not like uh, it's a wonderful life. I love it. It's a wonderful life. So I'm not a fan. yeah, I, I absolutely love that movie. It's Capricorn, but it's the best kind of Capricorn. Uh, it's, so <laughs> it, it's, no, for me, it's candy corn. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. So anyway, that is uh, Christmas story. Um. What are your thoughts on this movie? I hope you love it. If yeah. not, let us know politely down below in the comments. Politely, please. Yes, please. Uh, don't forget to give this video a big uh, like. I apologize. I'm beginning to lose my voice now. Um, like you just had a weekend of singing. So. I just did four shows this weekend, and yeah. my voice is essentially gone. I'm amazed we got through the podcast. Plus all this sugar.
No, no, we did a we, lot. We ate a lot of sugar. Yeah, little we, Debbie. These fucking abominations. But this is really good. This is watermelon. Oh God, so oh, this is, mm. yeah, these are terrible. So yes, um, shanky with that thing. <laughs> That's a really sharp point. So uh, if if you really, let us know if you liked it. Also, Mike and I host a little podcast called Geek Salad. You can check us out at geeksalad.podbean.com or wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Music. We also have the full audio here on YouTube as well as our weekly uh, movie reviews. You can also follow us on Twitter at Geek Salad Radio and on Facebook at Geek Salad Podcast. And I think I am done for the night, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'd be down there. Yeah, so anyway, until next time, I'm Andy. I'm Mike. Go forth and be nerdful. Talk to you later. Merry Christmas.